Hi, yes, it's arrived. This is the baby that I scored on eBay for 114 euro. But let me show you now how this gear is arrived to the door of my house. Thank you DPD for this excellent quality of shipment. Great job guys. Can be the tubes are broken. <clears throat> Let's have a look. This is what I got and this is how I got. Uh, it's definitely seen better transportation this puppy. So I have to to check if it's uh, working or not. As you see, uh, <laughs> I'm not fully lucky with the shipment uh, of this unit and uh, because of that uh, I, of course I already did uh, some kind of really basic uh, checking inside and um, of course now I get some kind of uh, calibration issue with this device. Let me tell you, I couldn't find even a one word about this unit. And as you see here, uh, this uh, device it's let's say made it by the Calibration Standards Corporation. What, what you guess, what I find about uh, this company? Zero, nothing. So then I find uh, something else on the back of the unit and uh, the company name is uh, Electro Instruments. Then after a couple of minutes of googling and uh, search on the internet, I find something really weird story about this company. So what you see now, it's not only a high voltage calibration standard. This gear and this company, the Electro Instruments company, it's really a part of the history of all electronic instruments what we are using today. So how the Electro Instruments company help us to arrive from here, these analog voltmeters, to here, to the digital voltmeters. Back in those days, the American Army and the American uh, Naval Force and the Air Force and uh, the NASA, they did a really huge pressure on all electronic instruments makers and laboratories to develop much more faster and much more um, precise instruments. So this is the ignition of the birth of the digital voltmeters. Why? Because the problem with the analog meters is the time. So all the professors and the laboratory workers, they spend a lot of time on to find the right uh, level of voltages and then apply some kind of uh, more precision uh, uh, plus minus adjustment on the instruments. The really first answer is came from the non-linear systems company. Uh, they introduced the solution which is eliminate this kind of issue with the voltage measurement. So what they did, they replaced these rotary switches with relays. This is the basic idea of all digital voltmeters. And of course, these relays back in those days are really expensive because it has to be gold plated, it has to be some kind of grease or, or oil inside or even vacuum inside and uh, it's consumed a lot of energy and it's making this really big uh, heavy noise in the, in the measurement systems. So these two guys who is uh, the owner and the co-founder of the Electro Instruments, their name is Jonathan Edwards and Walter East. They find the other way how they can reduce the cost of this uh, mechanism. They came out with the idea to replace all the relays with these rotary switches, what you can find in, back in these days in a telephone uh, centers. So the idea has worked really well on a paper and they try to show to their boss what is the new idea and their boss said oh it's a stupid idea I don't believe on that because he really don't interested at all to make his device much more cheaper because his customers 
is all the naval and uh, air force and the NASA and uh, so all these uh, weird American government uh, uh, groups. So he really don't care. But these two guys, Mr. Uh, Edward and Mr. East, they want to give this uh, new kind of technology to the normal uh, people in the normal uh, market. So they both didn't listen to them. And of course, uh, they left the company. And then later on, a couple of weeks later, they created their own company in 1954. So this is the time when the NLS company lost the monopoly on the digital voltmeter uh, systems. And what this did with the other companies, for example, with the HP, this is pushed the HP and the Fluke and all these old uh, companies to make the development much more faster. But of course, the electro instruments, they are not just seated on, uh, on the gold uh, mine. They find <laughs> other way how to to uh, improve uh, the rotary uh, digital system. They place the, all these mechanical switches into some kind of small case, which is full with oil. And of course, because it's full with oil, it has a massive amount of uh, uh, dielectrical uh, isolation, and it's also decreased the noise, and it's also improved the life of the switches. Their solution, <laughs> it can go up to 400 million switches per error. So it's meaning the NLS completely lost all the market. So, so everybody just bought the electro instruments, uh, digital voltmeters. In this short uh, time of period from 1954 to 1966, of course, the electro instruments company did a really huge income on the, on the business. <coughs> and as always, uh, what is uh, happened, almost any kind of revolutionary uh, companies in the electronic history or in a, co a computer history, somebody came, somebody bought them and then left them to die. Uh, what do you guess who bought them? and who wants them to die is the Honeywell company. And they shut it down in less than one year. Uh, Mr. East, uh, he stayed on a business as a businessman, so he, he just came as a investor. But Mr. Advice, he died after uh, soon when he just only 49 uh, year old. So yeah, that's all about uh, the electro instruments and how the electro instruments pushed all the market to get us from here to here. And uh, how this uh, calibration standard is came to the picture of this really big history. They have from that a really big and huge unit, which is almost uh, twice bigger than this with much more uh, uh, detailed switches and adjustments on it and uh, Mr. Edwards he realized this also he can make uh, for the for the public. They created this unit you know, based on their own inside calibration standards because back on those days you have to generate really high voltages because almost all the industry just came from the tube uh, solution to the new uh, transistor based solutions. So this voltage source it's uh, really part of the history of all electronic instruments and I'm really happy to see something like this in my lab because now I will look on this device on a different way. So let me show you what's the issue with this high voltage standard after this really high quality DPD shipment <laughs> to my house. I have some kind of voltages which is coming out from the output. It can be some kind of leakage here on the on the front port meters. You see if I just uh, touching the, the numbers are moving. So 
uh, this uh, vernier adjustment is absolutely out uh, from the calibration and of course here I also have uh, some some connection contact issue so let's now jump to the 10 volt range it's absolutely now you see the 11 dot 11 is absolutely uh, almost right one volt absolutely perfect two volt is slightly low but you see it's just the issue of this uh, rotary switch so let me switch off the device and let's uh, have a look inside so the tubes are already cleaned with uh, with uh, uh, alcohol and with the paper towel and uh, of course I did uh, some kind of uh, test measure and make sure all the cups and all the tubes are empty from the um, voltages this one is generating this freaking 1000 volt of uh, uh, voltage and uh, the next transformer is just uh, making the filament voltage and all the operational voltage so and here this is the six pieces of high voltage capacitor which is configured in serial parallel serial parallel this is how they reach the 1000 volt with uh, 450 volt uh, capacitors this is the voltage regulator uh, tubes and uh, normally this tube these tubes has uh, some kind of uh, uh, glass fiber uh, holder it's a simple glass fiber tube which is hold the the tubes to to the chassis across this uh, plastic uh, uh, stick and under this one uh, this is hold the voltage reference for all the comparator uh, transistor solution here and the next board is electrically completely isolated with this plate the real magic of of uh, the the selectors it's happening here so the first one first one has a pot meter plus a rotary switch but all the rest is only rotary switches so it's wired up to some kind of really high precision um, resistors and uh, what you guess uh, <laughs> what was the precision of these resistors it's rotated on it 0.02% uh, so <clears throat> yeah this device is using absolutely gorgeous high precision resistors I start to, to clean them of course I mark the position where it's uh, in originally where I opened it but there is a, there is a problem if you do a cleaning of course these uh, markers will be <coughs> will be washed out can be washed out so I also make here a little bit of marking so first I will tie these uh, screws here because I don't think so this is good if they can move a bit okay this is looks to me much more so this is how it looks now and I think somebody forgot the somebody forgot the plastic washer under it but so I have here a silicone washer from I don't know from where just make sure these resistors cannot move to nowhere okay this is tight and this is tight so what I have to do I have to clean out those uh, pot meters and also all these uh, switches and uh, for that for the first cleaning I will use uh, the 601 from the contact chemical because the 601 is not left any oil and nothing on the contact start the cleaning like uh, I don't want to press too much inside because it can be 
200 something volt running here and I just want to move them a bit like like this okay I, I think uh, I think it's uh, I think it start to clean yeah I feel yeah this is this is definitely uh, not a nice sound so this clean uh, contact spray and just a bit move oil much more it's just just like this so let's move it a bit I think it's enough let me first just remove this black remains from the old uh, grease okay oh how many yeah i see a lot mm, it will take a while this one is uh, not an electrical switch this is only the intendation for the for the rotation so in the past you see it has some kind of uh, grease on it or something which is of course by the age is absolutely came to be dried and, and lose less but i really lucky because there is no big heavy oxidation on that and uh, so i also have to clean those uh, mechanical parts here so again i'm coming with the 601 because it's a really clean alcohol or benzol or I don't know what kind of chemical I'm not well never in the chemistry yeah now it's absolutely like metal on a metal so with this precision instrument I don't want to get uh, anything into the pot meters from this VD40 because who knows the, the chemical contents of this uh, plastic it will be survived the VD40 but the VD40 is really good for uh, those uh, manical intendation just to to clean it more and uh, lose the oxidation so let me spray, spray a bit good good just a, really just a bit i want not want more because this will absolutely removes all the oxidation from this mechanical parts so okay now this is how it looks after the the air compressor and um, <clears throat> let me tell you now all these mechanical switches are really absolutely working perfectly. The next step is uh, apply some kind of uh, mechanical grease on this uh, uh, intendation. Apply here a bit from that and start to rotate in any every direction now the intendation is absolutely perfect and gorgeous i will choose this uh, wazarin solution because is this give will give me a really nice protection for the corrosion and also it's really good for the for the contact so let me spray here also a bit and of course <coughs> I want a bit to the axis wow wow completely new absolutely completely new so yeah this is really 
really beautiful now. And uh, if you are not happy with the results, of course you can do more cleaning on it, but I think uh, I think it's okay. In my case, looks it's absolutely like like new. And a lubrication. Yeah, there is enough uh, lubrication on it. And let me also clean a bit on the bottom. And yeah, yeah, really nice. Good, good. Of course, there is other chemicals on the market. It's some kind of gold and <clears throat> I don't know, but let me tell you, in these high voltage devices, <laughs> it's absolutely a wrong idea to use uh, these uh, gold fader uh, solutions because it can be left uh, a tiny a tiny layer from gold on, on everywhere, so the high voltage can be really run from one pin to the other, but uh, you don't have this issue with uh, the Vaseline. I think it's absolutely clean now. Uh, look how much shit and dust and dirt you can remove <coughs> with this technique. So now the device is dried out and um, uh, it's get uh, warm enough. I just left here for uh, half an hour to sit alone. And uh, I think now this device is in the specs because if you watch the, the Fluke 87V, which is calibrated uh, three years ago, uh, just uh, somehow uh, by mistake, I washed down the calibration sticker from it with some alcohol. So now if I switch uh, the, the unit on, then you will see it's just slightly out like uh, 4 uh, millivolts or close to 4 millivolts. Or if I switch the 10 volt, it's bang, it's 10 volt, absolutely. So now if I go up to 20, it's bang 20. 30, bang 30. Sorry guys if you didn't see me how I cleaned uh, all this uh, front surface, but I forgot to switch on the camera. Uh, I'm so stupid and I feel so sorry for that, but now everything is uh, placed together and of course I screwed back the, the top and I placed some kind of uh, new foam to the top of the transformers and now it looks to me this device is absolutely in a specs how they want it because look uh, now we dialed in 0000, zero, zero, zero and on the output I just get a really tiny bit of uh, voltage but of course even if I just touch the cables you can see it uh, can get some kind of uh, voltage across uh, the, the isolation of the cables. So if I switch now this Schlumberger to six and a half digit mode, maybe you can see here how it's, it's bang on. So uh, the precision of this machine, it's uh, up to 0 0.1% on a thousand volt range. Of course, in other ranges, it uh, changes a bit. Uh, it's almost there. I just missed here some kind of really tiny bit of uh, voltage because it's again, it can be my uh, cables. Look how it's changing. Even if I just uh, move here, this end, this, this is uh, ridiculously small voltages, what we're talking about. And, but if I touch here, this uh, this uh, connector maybe okay it's uh, yeah 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 okay it's uh, much more better look i dialed 10 millivolt it's 10 millivolt don't forget this can generate a 1000 volt on our output 10 volt uh, look at this it's absolutely amazing this device and 
it's absolutely bang on. I, I cannot say nothing. So yeah, I'm done with this beautiful instrument. Uh, sorry if you didn't see any big repairments on this uh, gear because I don't have to repair uh, nothing inside and also I cannot repair nothing inside because I'm still missing the documentation for uh, this uh, voltage uh, standard. Look how beautiful it is and it's absolutely in a gorgeous condition. So now I'm really happy because with this device I can start to develop some kind of uh, high voltage uh, FAT and GFAT based uh, uh, microphone preamps. Yeah, that's all. I hope you guys enjoyed. So, see you next time.